In this video, we want to talk about the recording formats that are available in the CX350 camera. A wide range of recording formats and options are available. When might you want to use one over the other? What is each one best for? Let's talk about it. First of all, in the file format menu, you can choose from AVC HD or QuickTime MOV. And Panasonic has promised that as a forthcoming firmware update, they're going to add P2 MXF files. Depending on when you watch this video, it may already be available. You may have another choice in this menu. Why would you want to use one over the other? Well, AVC HD, let's talk about that one first. AVC HD has been around for a number of years. It's a well-established format. It is for high definition footage or standard definition only. You cannot do ultra high definition footage in AVC HD. The main purpose for AVC HD even being in the camera, the reason that it's there is for long, long recording times at very small file sizes. AVC HD can record as low as eight megabits per second in high definition 720, or even the best quality mode, the PS mode is only about 25 megabits per second. When we talk about the QuickTime Move files, the lowest quality <laughs> format in there is twice the bit rate of the best quality of AVC HD. So AVC HD, if you need very small file sizes, maybe you want to upload footage over the internet, something like that. Maybe you're doing a news report out in the field and you need to go to an internet cafe and upload the files. AVC HD would be a great choice for that. Maybe you're recording a tremendously long event, you know, an eight hour conference and you want to get through it all on one memory card. Well, AVC HD on a 64 gig card, that'd probably get you easily through there. So AVC HD 1080 only, it's, it's good quality, but there's better that can be had. So generally I would say go to the MOV format. That's where the fun is at. That's where you get the variable frame rates. That's where you get super slow motion recording. That's where you get ultra high definition recording is in the file format of MOV. The P2 MXF file option, it's gonna offer formats such as AVC Long G50, which is a very nice quality, long group of pictures, 50 megabit codec that has been available on Panasonic's P2 cameras. And if you're integrating into a multi-camera environment that uses P2 cameras and MXF files, then hey, you'll have the option to do that also with the CX350. So that's a great way to go. Generally, if those two things don't apply to you, I would say that the MOV format is what you wanna choose. It is a standardized format, it is a QuickTime file format, it's available on Windows and Macintosh computers, and most of the functionality of the CX350 is offered when you're in the MOV format. A restriction is that you've got to use an SDXC card when you're recording in the MOV format. If you're in AVC HD, you can use whatever kind of card you want, it doesn't really matter. SDHC, SDXC, whatever. But when you're recording the MOVs, it's got to be an SDXC. And it really should be at least a V30 card. And the best card that you can use is a V60. You have to use a V60 for the highest bitrate modes, like the all intra 400 megabit. That requires a V60 card. Most things can be done on a V30 card, but some do require the V60. And that's just a speed rating on the card. When you're evaluating your memory cards, don't look at you know, a card says, oh, this is a 600X card, or this is 150 megabyte per second card. None of that matters. The only thing that matters to the camera is the speed rating, the class rating. And if it says it's a V30, it can be used for most everything the camera can do, but the highest bitrate stuff, the 200 megabit, the 400 megabit, those are gonna require a V60 card. And when you've chosen MOV, then you have a lot of choices to choose from. Most of this comes down to frame size and frame rate, but there are other choices. In the MOV format, it's going to be 1080 or 2160p. So that's 1080 high definition, 1920 by 1080, or 3840 by 2160 ultra high definition, UHD or 4K. It's called 4K or UHD. Then you have the frame rate, 23.98, 29.97, or 59.94. Those basically break down to 2398 is the film look. If you want to make something that looks cinematic and has that, that film style motion and you light for it properly and, and do all that other stuff, that 24P can be the element that really gives it that film style look. 
if you choose 29.97 that's kind of a hybrid between the film and the video look and might be easier to edit into a 60i or 60p program if you want the live look the looking through a window the reality tv the news sports that kind of look that you're going to find with the 59.94 if you're using the european frame rates of 25 and 50 then the 25 is the film look 50 is the live look you can choose interlace or progressive I say always choose progressive whenever possible, unless your client is requiring interlace. If they require 1080i, eh, give them 1080i, the camera can do it. But if they don't specify that, give them progressive. Progressive can be turned into interlace very easy, but interlace to progressive is not gonna give you the same quality. You need to start with progressive, that's better. Then you have a choice of color sampling and bit depth. Generally, you're going to be choosing between 420 and 422. It's right there in the name of the codec. Whether you're going to use 420, which is also 8-bit, or 422, which is also 10-bit. They go together in the recording codecs. There's an exception we'll talk about in a second. But generally, when you choose 422, you're also choosing 10-bit. When you choose 420, you're also choosing 8-bit. If you don't know what those mean, the simplest thing to say is the 422 is gonna deliver better quality footage. Higher color sampling and higher shading, higher resolution shading, so there's less banding and less stepping in the gradients, finer gradients. It's just higher quality footage. It's gonna take up more bandwidth in the codec. It's gonna result in larger file sizes, but it does record nicer looking footage. The 420, is a more compressed codec, smaller file sizes. When I say more compressed, you may not necessarily see a difference in compression because there's just less data there to start with that they have to encode. So the 420 can look very, very nice. But for the best, you want the 422 10-bit. That's just, that's just how those rules work. You have to balance that against the bandwidth of the files because the 422s are gonna take up more space on the card. Another choice you have is all intra versus long gop. When do you want which one? Well, the all intra is a very high quality way of recording that takes up a tremendous amount of space. <laughs> 400 megabits, a lot of data, two, two and a half times as much data as the equivalent long GOP at 150 megabits. The all I codecs encode every frame individually alone, standalone. It's like a whole bunch of JPEG pictures, one after the other after the other. And what happens in one frame will have no effect on what happens in any other frame. It, each frame is treated individually. And that can be pretty easy for a computer to decode. It can be an easier to edit codec. It just takes up more space. You get less recording time. It takes longer to transfer the files. That just comes with there being more data. The long TOP is a more efficient way to encode. It knows from frame to frame what's changed and what hasn't. So when you look at typical video, a lot of times there will be areas in the frame where nothing changes frame to frame. For example, look at this video you're watching right now. I'm animated and I'm moving and it's having to encode and track all these changes. But the camera here, that hasn't moved. <laughs> Since we started this video, that hasn't moved. If we use an all intra codec, it would have to encode this section of the camera for every single frame for the entire duration of the video. Very wasteful because the long GOP codec can say, oh yeah, just repeat this section frame to frame. That didn't change, just repeat it. So instead of re-encoding everything, it just duplicates it with, with very little data. It can be very efficient. You get smaller file sizes, you get faster file transfer, you get equivalent quality at about maybe half to a third of the bit rate. Long GOP is very good for that. It can be harder to edit. It can be slower to edit. So you really have to test this on your computer and see if it makes a difference. Some computers eat this stuff up. <laughs> you know, if you got a fast gaming computer, it'll have no problem with long GOP footage or might not have any problem with long GOP. Whereas if you have an older computer, it might struggle. You might only be able to get four or five frames a second or something like that. Whereas with the all intra, it might be real time. So there's a case where you have to test it. The all intra is a very high quality codec. It is 10-bit 422 at all times. So the comparison, let's say the 400 megabit all intra is about equivalent to the 150 megabit long GOP. So you decide that 
in my opinion, largely based on editing performance. But the last thing we're gonna look at is HEVC. Do you go with that or do you go with the regular recording codecs? All the other codecs are H.264. Very familiar. It's also called AVC. It's been around for years. It's highly efficient. It's a good, solid, robust codec. But now there's H.265. Ooh, yes, one better. And it is better. It's, it's, a, it's a more efficient codec. It is capable of storing the same picture, the same quality picture in less space than H.264 would. That's nice. The HEVC codecs in the Panasonic camcorder take up actually a little more room than the H.264, so they have higher bandwidth. This is a nice feature because you get more efficiency and more bandwidth leads to better image quality in general. There's one difference that the H.264 holds an advantage in. It records 422 color sampling. So it, it retains more color information than the HEVC does. HEVC, on the other hand, puts its bandwidth to more efficient use and it is usually better integrated with hybrid log. The HLG gamma for high dynamic range recording can be used with H.264, but it seems to be more compatible. Uh, the, the wrapper for HEVC files seems to be more likely to include support for high dynamic range. I've seen nonlinear editing programs that don't recognize that the footage was recorded in high dynamic range when it's recorded in H.264, but it does recognize it when it's recorded in HEVC. So my recommendation, if you have no other reason to choose between them, if you're recording in hybrid log, go ahead and use HEVC. But I would also recommend highly testing the two, H.264 and HEVC on your computer, because as said before, the editing performance on HEVC might be surprisingly good. If you have a very recent computer that has HEVC optimization built into it, it might be so much easier to use and friendlier to you to edit that that might be worth not having 422 versus 420. So that's a choice you're going to have to make based on testing. That's an overview of the file formats. There's a lot of file formats. And there's more information in the guide to the CX350 camcorder, which is a free book that I wrote that Panasonic makes available to you as a free download. So if you want more information, download that and check it out. Otherwise, stay tuned to the channel and look at the rest of the videos that we've put up here for more information on how to use your CX350. Panasonic.